Greetings YouTube. I am CMAGE Skyflash. How you doing? Today I'm here to, on my very first tutorial video, on uh, how to make a leather craft uh, gun holster for my steampunk cosplay outfit. Uh, I'm here by special request as of Lilith Star, a fellow YouTuber and friend of mine. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> to um, show you how I do the things I do, or at least some of the things that I do. It's very basic, it's, um, here it is, basically. <sighs> this is what I'm gonna be crafting today. This is uh, something that I've already made. Uh, and what I'm, this goes down my right hand side, and what I'm gonna be doing today is showing, is making one to go down my left hand side. So it's basically the exact same thing, uh, Lilitha very kindly showed this off on one of her videos, and uh, I'm gonna. Be, and she was impressed by it. She thought she thought I should make a video. So here it is. This is what I'm going to be making today. I'm going to be going through one, cutting out the leather, uh, stamping the holes uh, along there, stitching the thing together because it's all going to be one piece of leather, and also doing the little stamps that are in there as well to give it effect. Uh, and then there's a loop in there, which is obviously a belt just fits through. And so yeah. Uh, the video is going to have a few jumps in it here and there to save time because uh, obviously there's a lot of holes to stamp as you can probably tell and here we go let's do this okay so here we are <clears throat> uh, to start with we've got uh, here at the workstation we've got our gun which I already knocked up a while back and it's what the other holes uh, I use the other holster for um, I use this as my basic template to create the to create a stencil. This was my first step for how the thing's going to go. So as if the gun fits into there like that, I just simply traced around the outline of the gun on a piece of random A4 paper on a piece of random A4 paper and created the outline. So that obviously folds over like that, slots in. created that part there and then made a almost rudimentary if you will if you can see that a uh, bit of paper which uh, goes onto there and then that folds over like that because that is th it's this bit of leather here that's going to come over that, that. <clears throat> and I've already traced out the outline to save a bit of time there and so a quick rundown of what we've got here bits and pieces you're going to need a Stanley knife to cut said vegetable leather that's obviously very important a cutting board so we don't damage the dining room table parents would kill me <clears throat> uh, a few other random bits and pieces here we've got thread a waxed brown thread uh, and uh, needles, obviously, to stitch. For our stamping, we have the stamping tool handle there. And then we're gonna have a hammer, which is going to, I've got the hammer somewhere. It's in my tool kit. I need to go and grab that. <clears throat> and these are the stamps that we're gonna be using as well. A cog stamp that you can see to keep up the steampunk aesthetic and uh, a dragon because I love dragons a hole punch with the smallest nozzle setting if you can see that yeah because it only needs to be a small hole for the stitching and then that's obviously whack a hammer down on top of that create the thing and what's known as, take it out of its package, James. My name is James, by the way. <laughs> but today I am almost C Mage Skyflash. This is a beveler, which we will use to create a nice edging around the whole thing. It makes it nice and smooth, gives it a nice finish just uh, for aesthetics, makes it look good, that sort of thing. Okay, 
So, starters, what we're going to do, we're going to take our knife and cut around. Here we go. It's always important to go slow with this. tend to get a pretty good, nice straight cut. You may need to go through a few times because this, this is vegetable tanned leather by the way. All of um, the components uh, that I've showed you there um, are bought from my local Tandy Leather work store. Tandy Leather in Northamptonshire, that's where I live. Uh, there may be other stores elsewhere. I think a lot of their things you can order online as well. Gently go around the edge. I've left that little gap. I don't know if you can see that, literally just in there. Because obviously that's going to fold over like that. Down, on, and then that, obviously leaving a bit of a gap in there, helps us to be able to do that so the whole thing doesn't fold over with it. finish cutting this out. Okay, so we've cut our piece. <clears throat> that folds over there like that. That will get stitched around the outside there thus and that will go, that meets up with that part there. So we essentially have, wherever the gun is, it's over there. <clears throat> folds over there like that and the gun obviously slots into there. Next step, we're going to take a beveling knife. I call it a knife, I don't know if it's really a knife, even so. And then we're going to, what I'm going to do is, is attempt to zoom in here. Here we go. So you can see. And then all you do is you just go along that part there and that's all you do is literally just go along and then you can see like a nice line come off around the edge it smooths it down all the way along and then you do that both sides so it's not a sharp edge all the way, not that it's sharp anyway but it just makes it nice and rounded and smooth. I don't know if you can see that at all. Camera's going blurry. But even so, whereas it's normally a sharp edge like that, it's a lot more rounded. Thanks to the beveling knife. So we'll now go around the entire thing with that. Give it a nice edge.
down the other way. Any tatty bits in the corners, the bevelo gets rid of as well. Just gives it a nice finish around the edge. Some of these sharp corner bits here, again, it's not sharp. What you can do is, oh, zoom in. <clears throat> uh, use your knife. And you can round that off just by simply, that, just by taking little tidbits off around the edge make it nice and round. And then again the other way. Cut tiny little straight lines, gives it a nice curve. And we'll just do that. just to round that off. It's not too bad. Next part is to stamp some holes. That's what we're going to do next, at least. Um, thing, I'm all unorganised. I've got my hammer here, and we've got the uh, back out. <coughs> original one here as a guideline. And then all I'm going to do is just simply. Try and space them as even apart from each other as I can. I'm going to use a bit of the spare random leather that we cut off earlier to put underneath. I'm just going to adjust the camera here. Zoom in. Reangle. <laughs> Forgive the crudity of the video viewers. So, here we go. Hole punch and then just a jolly good whack. Straight through. Creates a nice hole. And then we're going to do that all the way along. even distance from the edge and an even space apart from one another. Do -do -do. go around the whole thing like this. You 
get the general idea. And to make sure it's nice and even the other side, what I'm simply going to do is fold that over and then just use a pen or a pencil uh, and then just make a mark through this hole onto the other side so it lines up. It's not perfectly straight, but even so, I'm just going to mark, I'm just going to take the pen, put a hole put a mark all the way through so that when we stitch you can line up the holes somewhat the same so it's in those tiny little marks there is where we're going to put our other holes stamp it through that way so that the stitching lines up nice and easy and evenly okay it's not overly straight there but even so, I can touch that up with the knife in a minute. That's not a problem. <clears throat> That's the thing about leather crafting. There's always going to be a, a little bit of a nip okay. here and there. So Finally, got the holes done, and there are a lot of a lot of them, as you can see, both there and there. That's it, and on that part as well. Uh, the stamping and the stitching is always going to be the longest parts of doing these sorts of things but it is finally done. That's why I wanted to skip that entire part so I'm not boring you to death with stamping loads and loads of holes. Even so. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to do now is do some stamping using the dragon and the cog stamps <clears throat> that I've got here. Now, the reason why these are a darker colour is because I've simply used a bit of ordinary water and a general household sponge to soak the vegetable tanned leather a little bit. Makes it wet, makes it a bit more pliable, softer, because that way you get the stamp to go on there, hammer that on, and it goes on really, really well. To put it onto the dry stuff, it just wouldn't work at all. So watering it down, just ordinary water, softens the leather, and then we can do that. <clears throat> and all you do is, I'll just demonstrate on a little bit of um, scrap leather that I've got there, just dab that off. All you do is just start working some ordinary water into the leather and it just immediately, the vegetable tanned leather just immediately begins to soak in. You let that dry off a bit, like I've done with the actual bit that I've got here, and then you can begin stamping. So that's that basically, put that to one side. Okay, we're going to do the dragon to begin with. Now, obviously, get it lined up. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so you can see. I do, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> get the stamp lined up pretty much where you want it, and then go for it, basically. Give it a good whack. Good whack, and then all the way around, all the way around each side as well. To get the impression that you want. And hopefully all being well. Perfection. Love it. The first time I tried this, I did not do it very well. And I don't think it came out overly well on the other one that I did. I mean, obviously it looks a bit different when it dries, but still, that I am very, very pleased with. Next, we're going to do the cogs. So that just simply detaches from that, goes on to that. There are many, many ones of these that you can get. These are only two that I've um, experimented with thus far, and I absolutely love them. So here we go, let's do this. So get that lined up, whack. All sides. Apologies if I've not got the camera angled right here, you can't really see that at the moment.
see when that dries. Zoom out again. So obviously when that dries, that will look really, really nice. Okay. Next part is to literally just stitch the thing together. Um, we're nearly, very, ne very nearly done. So, now what we're going to need... I'm only going to stitch down this bit for now, again, so I'm not taking too long and boring you to death. <laughs> so we get our thread, brown wax thread, a needle. Obviously allow plenty of thread to be able to go through. Now there's no knot to tie from the off. to put that in through there, hopefully, first time. Winners. Done. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start at this end here. Now when it comes to stitching, and I believe this is called saddle stitching, uh, you start where you mean to end. We're going to go in and out, in and out, one way, and then back the other way. Here we go. So through both holes that we've made, pull it all the way through, <clears throat> and start. Way. Hopefully you'll see this. There we go. And then again the other way. I could have waited for this leather to dry, but I wanted to do this. So it is done. I've left enough that end, so obviously I can tie a knot when we're done. may look loose now, but this kind of stitching, it allows it to stay together really strong like as you do more, as you go through, it all tends to stay together. This next part here, so this is where, this is where the real trick is, you go back down through our last, through our final hole. Okay, and then all we're going to do is just simply go back the other way. We come through that way and fill in the gaps, going back through each hole. Now this is where it becomes nice and tight, and where it generally tends to stay together. Can't see that, there we go. So I've basically gone back through myself there. So then, effectively, what you're doing is you're then going back through your original areas. You're filling in the gaps, basically. The holes are nice and lined up. As you start going back the other way is when it pulls nice and tight. Gives a real western kind of look and that's what I was going for when I did the steampunk outfit which is a steampunk outlaw, cowboy outlaw type thing by the way.
and then what you do is simply tie a knot on the inside. You come back up on yourself. Through the middle and then what you want to do is do the same with the bit that you originally started out with. So it is now inside and then we just simply tie a knot nice and neat in there I think I'm going to double knot it nice and tight around there and then just using a pair of ordinary household scissors we'll just snip away the excess and those little bits you can just gently tuck in there and done and then I'm gonna go all the way out all the way around this part here to give off the same effect there and then that will effectively be done so the next uh, there's, there'll be a jump here the next time it comes on there will be a lot of stitching around there and that will essentially be the finished piece okay And we're done, finally. <laughs> right, stitching is completed all the way around the outside. <clears throat> uh, nice and evenly, I like to think. I went a tiny bit wrong. I underestimated the amount of thread that I had for this one. It happens, that's it, yeah. But it's easy enough to um, uh, tie a knot and uh, join two bits of thread together. A wonderful thing and yet annoying thing about the uh, wax thread that you use is that it is very waxy, very sticky, can stick to your fingers. So um, uh, yeah, it, I was able to uh, tie two pieces together and uh, that's why the knot, if you can see, has ended up on the inside rather annoyingly, but still together, firm, nice and great, uh, a success as far as I'm concerned, so yeah. And uh, if you will, that is the gun, that's it, which slots nicely into there, obviously. Yeah, okay, so that's that for this tutorial, I guess. I hope um, everybody's learned a bit from doing this um, and enjoyed watching as, I, uh, as much as I have creating. Uh, this, uh, it just adds to my steampunk outfit now. It's gone through a few basic leather crafting maneuvers uh, and techniques in terms of the uh, cutting the leather, stamping the leather and stitching said leather and that sort of thing uh, to give off um, a simple but at the same time very effective um, effect. One other thing that I am going to do to this at some point, not now because um, it's an easy enough thing and I've, uh, 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 it's easy enough to do to be perfectly honest with you, is use a bit of this stuff here, uh, Doc Martin's um, uh, Wonder Balsam it's called, which is basically a waxy based dubbing sort of thing which um, protects and preserves leathers uh, gives it a really nice uh, effect because if I compare it to the other one that I've got here, I don't know how well that shows up in the video, but this one is the previous one, and I used a bit of the uh, dubbing stuff on it, which has essentially um, tanned it, given it a more weathered, kind of aged kind of look, whereas that one I, ha I have yet to do so. 
because same as before, the vegetable leather, vegetable tanned leather, it's very absorbent, so that will absorb a lot of that dubbing and give it a nice effect and at the same time protect it because obviously if that were to get wet now that would just absorb it which event which would dry off anyway but even so so um, yeah that's it for that uh, thanks for watching I hope you've all learned a bit I may do the odd video again at some point what I do intend to do I will say is make another gun like that at its core that was a nerf gun a nerf double strike zombie strike gun which I simply uh, sanded down painted up but I'll go through that another in another video I think maybe and uh, that will make for the left hand side so then I'll have the right hand left dual pistol action yeah Give me if I'm not looking at the camera. <laughs> so, um, final thing I want to say is just shout out to Lilith for start. Thank you very much for um, one suggesting that I do a tutorial video on this. Um, otherwise, I probably never would have done so. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it was a it was it was a really good experience doing this. Never done anything like this before, I'll be honest with you. So yeah, Lilitha, thank you very much for that. That's it. And everybody, I'd appreciate if you go and follow Lilitha Star, because she does some awesome stuff. Um, as I say, she is a YouTuber. She's also on Instagram and DeviantArt and that sort of thing. <sighs> give her a follow, give her a like, subscribe, all that jazz. Uh, because she does some awesome stuff, she draws videos, she tells stories, she plays video games, way more than I ever have ever done, to be perfectly honest. So yeah. <clears throat> Thanks once again to her and everybody else. Cheers. Take care. And I shall probably see you again soon. Like, follow and subscribe me if you like. There probably will be more. Thanks again. Take care everybody. Bye for now.